paying attention, your attention is coming. You're waking up from the sleep. You're starting to wake up to the truth of who you are. And you're going deeper, deeper, deeper. Your attention starts to shift inside in this inner journey. And in the beginning, it's a little bit difficult because the outside world, there's a lot of eye candies. So you, you know, all these things popping up. It's like driving on Sunset Boulevard in L.A. or Hollywood Boulevard, and you see all these billboards. Try me, try me, eat me, eat me, drink me, drink me, buy me, buy me. There's a lot of entertainment outside. Or if you go to Las Vegas and you're driving on a strip or walking on a strip and there is all these entertainments wants to take you. But on this path, you're kind of ignoring, start to ignore these things and you're bringing your attention inwards. And as this shift is happening, it's difficult at times because everybody else is looking outside and you're starting to look inside and there's no entertainment yet into it. You're in this period that in between. It's like when you're going to grow your hair from short to long, you go to this weird period. It's not short, it's not long. So there's this weirdness happening. So the same thing on your spiritual path, you're shifting, you're not 100% recognizing the juice yet. So it's not like you're blasted by this bliss feeling and this calmness inside of being just drunk in divine love. You get bits of it, but you're not there yet. You're in the shift. You're disconnecting from the world that appears and disappears with all of its entertainments. Oh, come and love me and come and marry me and we have kids together or, or let's have this house and let's go on this vacation. Da, 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 da. It's just very strong, you know, and it's very attractive. And all your life you've been looking in that direction. Now you are shifting and you're looking inwards. So once it's turning, it's not that pretty. It's not always fun. There's a lot of doubts and in-between spaces that you've been that you feel lost. You can't go back to the world anymore because... It's not working for you. You can't fall asleep again because you're half awake, but you're not completely awakened either. So you're in between place. And there are times that you're going to experience, and you have experience, I'm 100% sure of that, because you wouldn't be here right now and you wouldn't be listening to me, that you feel like you lost your way. That at one point you came to the world of the spirit and things were really going well and then you got deviated deviated, and you went through like a few years that you lost and you feel like you lost it. And now you're finding it again because, you, because that was the period that these gates, these doors are turning and in, that's the weird part, that the hair is short to the hair is long. You have to go through that trans, transition period of the weirdness. But as the attention is turning inwards, then you're getting, start getting the juice because you feel the bliss, the love, of being centered, being quiet, 
and starting to recognize the nobody, starting to recognize that you're really not anything. So you start to disidentify with things you thought you were and identify more with what you are. And in this what you are, you, you have the sense of I am, but the more you dive into it, I am, but I am not anything. Yet, I am all of it. And that's a very critical part. That's the part that the teacher, the master, comes because this is the final place. It's very delicate. It needs to really be taken care of. It, because it's very easy. You've done a lot of work. You've come all the way to here. But everything could be lost if it's not nurtured, if it's not taken care of if it's not really paying attention to it and being very diligent with it, it can all be spelled. So this other last stage that you're in, that's where you need to get selfish, literally be selfish, and really be dedicated, rejecting anything that's not supporting the path. And that's where your intuition comes and your true responsibility comes. That means your, response, your main responsibility in this life, your number one priority, number one responsibility in this life the one on the very top and everything else is below it is not anything that people tell you. Oh, you have to be responsible to your children or your family or the country or your religion or your whatever. No. None of them is your main responsibility in this life. It's not correct. This is what they've told you. Your main and foremost and number one responsibility in this life and this path, especially in this stage that you are, is to be utterly, ruthlessly, 100% truthful to your calling and yourself. What is right? For you, what is right, your calling, your responsibility is to be truthful to yourself. What 100% feels right, whatever that is, it feels really right for me to be in the nature and meditate. That's what my heart tells me. My heart tells me that I need to be with my children and take care of them. Then that's the right thing. My heart tells me to be with my older mother and be available for her rather than go travel around the world. Then that is my truth. Or my truth is to go to the ashram, be with my, my teacher now. This is my calling more than anything else. Then that is your truth. Whatever your heart at this stage is really saying this, then you're responsible to follow that.